welcome to, to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Oh, Rex is no He's Rex. He's week. no longer dry week. It's, and, it's, it's oh. whiskey time. So oh. we're doing uh, Evan Williams, 1783. Okay, we've done Evan Williams. This is a new. This thing? isn't. This is one they released as a special thing. It's. It's uh, it was released with a whole bunch of words that don't mean anything. Oh, so like like heritage and historical like already, and craft. And yeah, we already know we like the Evan Williams bottled and bond. It's great, and then the, the standard black label is decent for the price. Yeah, it's good. This one is simply for the price. Small batch. Ah, meaning there could be yeah up to infinity barrels made in the batch. And it's sort of supposed to be like a little bit fancier than the generic black label. Uh huh. You know what we should do? Huh. Pico batch. Pico batch? Yeah. Ah, Pico. Like, this is like smaller than my cup. <clears throat> it's on the Pico level. <laughs> and, or, or atomic. There's only like one half of one bottle. Atomic, <laughs> atomic batch. Not, not even a full bottle. <laughs> okay. All right, so this is uh, evidently 75, 13, 12. Now, if you remember last time we drank, uh, uh, Mash Bill, by the way, um, we drank Evan Williams last time and we talked about the yeah. slightly questionable claim of Evan Williams actually starting a distillery in 1783. Okay, oh, that's where the date comes from. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. So they're, they're once again referencing this is when he started the distillery in Kentucky and that makes him one of the earliest distillers in Kentucky. Sure, okay. <clears throat> Apple juice. But all that really matters is, what does it taste like? Apple juice and oak on the nose. Now, I'm gonna have to warn you, today when we woke up, <clears throat> there were three major things that cause allergies in Austin. Uh, grass, pollen, Oak and mold, yeah, and all three are rated very high this morning. Just take the uh, all three. Take the Zyrtec. Then. I already did the Zyrtec, but I'm a little bit not at the top of my game right now. Okay, so I'm getting like a tanniny apple juice. The oak is actually dipping a toe into a little bit of that oak bitterness on the nose. Presents as some tannin elements in What's the proof an appley nose. It's smelling a little bit the dust, thin. A little dusty corn. It does smell a little bit thin and, uh, well, I would say almost a little bit sharp. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. Here's what yeah. I mean by that, is yeah. it doesn't feel like it's really, ooh, rich bourbon. Yeah, yeah. It feels like this really narrow bandwidth. What's the proof? It smells like it has 43. An, an alcohol, ah, it smells hotter than 43. <laughs> it does smell hotter than 43. Okay. It smells sharper. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's slightly watery, a little bit bitter, a little bit sweet. I'll tell you this, hmm. it's all kinds of okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one is amazingly reasonable. Uh, it does switch up from the first moment of the sip to where it lands. It there's lands a, in the woody tannin. There's a nice little journey it goes on, right? It switches it up. It's mm -hmm. not one, you know, monolithic note, but uh, they're very classic bourbon notes. They're a little bit thin, and um, some brown sugar. Eventually, you get to some brown sugar <laughs> on the finish there. Yeah, every once in a while, I'll roam around and see what other people have thought about things. Sure. And so I stumbled onto a review on Distiller.com mm -hmm. by this guy named Michael J. I think it is, or I, Michael I J Neff. Yeah. Let's just say Michael Neff. Yeah. And he, in the first sentence of his review, he said, "This is perfect." He said, uh, "If a street artist sketched a caricature of what bourbon is supposed to be." You would get this whiskey. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah, you see it? It's like, yeah, it's Like, okay. yeah, it's totally a bourbon. Yeah, it's okay. It's not the whole character. All right. But it's the accenting parts that make you recognize it as a bourbon. Yeah. No, I... I, I it's pretty that. fair, right? And then there's a, there's a dipping of maraschino cherry in here. Here's, here's the thing that's kind of interesting for me about this whiskey. Mm-hmm. There, ooh, the cherry there is. is a decent amount of... Classic bourbon complexity. Yes. It switches it up. It's got <clears> you know, <throat> eventually brown sugar. It's got the oak. It's got a little dose of cherry, some apple juice on the nose there, like a tanniny apple juice. But I think all of those flavors are undercut by what feels like a little bit of a thinness, a little bit of a pointedness. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels hotter than 43% for sure. But uh, it's, all, glass really it's all kinds of okay. So it's got the almost, it's got a very similar nose to the Evan Williams generic. Okay. It is more complex than the Evan Williams generic. Yeah. It's got more going on than the generic one. Yeah, yeah. I remember really liking the bottled and bond one. It doesn't come close to that to mm -hmm. me. I would rather spend a little more money and get the bottled and bond one. Now, we're going to start trying something no, to work second. through. Hold on a second. This bottled and mm -hmm. bond? Yeah. Wasn't this like 10 damn dollars? Yeah, but this is even cheaper than that. This These is, are all in the budget no, no, range. No, hold on. 
This is the budget. Mm -hmm. This is in between. If my memory serves me when I'm looking at the shelves, it's this is cheapest, then this one, then bottled and bond. Okay, in so, order. so now I'm in a for the money kind of mindset here. Yeah. So if this is budget. <clears throat> so here's, remember my dad's rule where my dad and I sit out in the deck, we have some fancy whiskey, and then we put a bottle of Ballantines yeah. or McClellan on yeah, the yeah, deck. Yeah. So this would be that bourbon for me, where it's like, hey, we start with some fancy stuff, sure. then we set this one on, and we just refill while hanging out. If the bottle's gone at the end of the night, I'm not going to be all that worried about it. Ballpark for me. <clears throat> Ballpark for me. What kind of rough price point are we looking at here? Your prices may vary wildly, but <clears throat> because if it's as low as I, I think you're alluding to. $13.99. Holy crap. Okay. For that price point, I think this is probably the cheapest whiskey I've ever had with this much nuance. Now, not every bit of this is full, fleshed out, rich, voluptuous notes, kind of thin, kind of, short, kind of bitey. Probably but it, 15 bucks. But it switches it up. Yeah, even at 15 bucks, it switches yeah. it up to <clears throat> an impressive degree at that price. So I got a new plan. We got to move forward. We're going to knock these things out in time. Okay. Okay. So Nathan Huey gave us this, by the way. Nathan Huey! No, no. He's patron saint. He's been... New patron saint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <is> so this? <clears throat> this is chicken cock. Yeah. I got nothing to say. <laughs> well, why is everybody looking at me? <laughs> why was anybody looking at me? I don't have anything to add to that. It's just the name of the whiskey. <laughs> this is a new thing I want to start trying to do. Mm -hmm. well, you and I had talked about this, which is uh, compare it to a gift whiskey. Right. Um, right, and so we can start working and getting a chance to try people's things, right. but also to a well-known whiskey. But the thing is, <clears throat> without trying them beforehand and opening them off camera, it's hard to know how to like line up. So my goal isn't to say, these taste the same, right. and that's why I chose them. So how do they compare? It's how do they compare, okay. and it's because when you go to a store, what always happens is you go to get your bottle of whiskey you always get, right. and some employee or somebody goes, hey, you ever tried this one? So we're leaning into this idea. <gasps> Oh. Such a noob. Such a noob. Get your knife. Re I, I, my knife is gone. It fell out of my pocket somewhere. We're leaning into this idea of reference points being very, yes. very valuable whenever you're trying to decide what flavors are you actually getting. Whenever you have one thing, it's like trying to, it's like trying to taste in a vacuum. It's like, <clears> well, <throat> I think I'm getting cherry. I think I'm getting oak, maybe a little brown sugar on this bourbon. But whenever you try another bourbon, then you can say, oh, well, this one's much more apple than the other one. And this one is much more oaky than that one. Now, there's variations on this whiskey. This is eight-year-old whiskey. This is part of the run that they did release for their 160th anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's um, This is a whiskey dating back to 1856. It's really nice. It okay. was established in Paris, yeah. Kentucky. Okay. Paris, Kentucky. This is Indiana distilled. Okay. So they sourced this. So is it MGP? Don't know. Don't know. But it was distilled in Indiana, probably. Right. Yeah. Okay. So slightly, there's a slight like dusty, musty note to this. I get almost sour compared to this Evan Williams 1783. I'm not, getting no cherry. I'm getting more of a vanilla note. Yeah. There's more of a vanilla. The big dark sweet cherry note is not in this. This is way more of a slightly soured grain dust and vanilla. Vanilla and a little. Uh, a little bit more of a rounded off oakiness. Yeah, almost lemon. Oh, uh, not quite. Like lemon icing. Oh, okay. All right. You yeah, know that sugar. Metal? Yeah, sugary. Sugary, lemon. sugary. Yeah, not like a squeeze of lemon. Between the two, I like this one better. It's just a more enjoyable. Feels. I like the nose better. Feels more mature. I've already tasted. Feels more mature. Oh, yeah. That's. See, that's got the wood note just right down the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And that's the core. And everything is just sort of wrapped around that. Yeah. That is. That's really nice. Ah, oh, that's that's tasty. Now, so <clears throat> it, if we happen to have to sample more whiskeys per episode, yeah, we're gonna be able to, to shoot do less these references. Episodes. That's not was never my intention when yeah. I was floating this idea. That's just a result yeah. of you getting better uh, reviews. Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. I really like the story of this because this to me is the perfect example 
of how bourbon should be done when you're starting new companies and using old brands. Yeah. So this dates back to 1856, but this company uh, burned down and went out of business in the 50s, mm -hmm. right? But at one point, it was the most sold bourbon in America. Right. Okay. That's a big deal. Yeah. Right? It was even the, the primary bourbon sold in the Cotton Club during Prohibition, which is a famous club in, during Prohibition. Right. Now, <clears throat> this guy, Mati Antila, dis, was doing research on whiskeys, discovered that this defunct brand existed, mm -hmm. and he bought it and revived it. Now, that could have been a story about how he's trying to pretend like it's the original brand, yeah. and my grandfather owned the company, and sure. blah, 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 sure. blah, blah. Sure, sure. No, but what he just said was, this is an amazing story in American history. Sure. I think it deserves to come back to life. Fair enough. We're gonna bring it back. We're gonna source our whiskey that says so right there on the bottle, yeah. right? And then pretty quickly after they sold out of all of these, right. and it ended up being $100 a bottle, right. they built a distillery. Okay. Right? Yeah. And that was in 2018. Yeah. Last year. Right on. Right? And now they're currently partnering with Bardstown Bourbon Company, because Bardstown does maybe one of the only truly collaborative bourbon projects, which is where they'll work with other distilleries to craft their spirit for them yeah. while they're working on their, developing their own stuff. Yeah. So the new uh, stuff coming from Chicken Cock will probably be Bardstown whiskey. This is when it was still Indiana. Right on. I, I will say this, I like the finish, eventually, it takes a while to get there, but I like the finish on this 1783. It eventually gets into you know, this wood note and then it turns into a nice brown sugar. This doesn't land ultimately in just a really nice, comfortable way. No, it's, it's better all the way up until the finish. Yeah, the best part of this whiskey is the first huge impact of the flavor when you take a sip. Yeah. But it is great whiskey. I'm, mean, I dig it. Oh yeah, and for the money, I still prefer this one. Well, but for the money, this is a hundred dollars. That's fifteen dollars. Yeah. yeah. So for the money, everyone <laughs> So, <laughs> for the record, reference points moving forward aren't you know we think these taste similar or they're which not, one's better or they're not even price comparable. It's reference points in the same category. Mm -hmm. They'll always be in the same category, <clears throat> but reference points to see what elements of notes and smells and flavors are you getting out of one whiskey compared to another. Yes. You ready? Okay. Here's fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.